think we all went into it hoping that, you know, after all that the family went through, that maybe something good can come of it. And so far, really, it seems like a lot of positive uh, change has happened as a result. I feel like I've learned a lot from them, just like as a person, like how you treat people, how you look out for people, how you look out for your neighbors, how you, you walk around Dart Street or Vincennes where they live. They know everybody. You know, hey, how are you? How's it kid? You know, everything like that. And it's something that you don't always see here in the U.S. And um, so I feel like there's, you know, there's the project of getting the story told and writing a book. And then there's that other thing, which is learning from people. I know there are other innocent people in the prison systems around the country. Well, you look, you just say 1% of all the people in prison are innocent. That's going to be 20,000 people. That's a lot of people. When I was found guilty, the judge asked me, he said, uh, Mr. Mayor, do you have anything to say? And I said, yes, Your Honor. He said, if um, you think this is justice, I think you and your whole judicial system are a crock of shit. And he doubled my sentence. Leading up to and immediately after Katrina made landfall on August 29, 2005, Homeland Security and FEMA were dazed and confused. It was the effort of ordinary Americans rushing to the scene who brought the most direct help. Plenty joined their efforts and had a school bus loaded with relief supplies in New Orleans on September 2nd. Since that first run, Plenty has set more than 35 relief supply runs and over 70 volunteers to the Gulf while providing financial support, goods, and volunteers to other grassroots and local community agencies. One of the things we have been seeing is the virtual instant community building that has occurred, both among survivors who have banded together to help each other cope and rebuild their lives and among the armies of highly motivated grassroots citizen volunteers who are doing the best work on the ground in contrast to the mega relief agencies and the federal government. We're engaged now in a war of ideas. And the first step in evil is always to see the other person as being somehow fundamentally different than us. I think it's really important that we start to see each other as a we and not an us and a them. And the more that we tell each other about ourselves, the more likenesses we see that we have. Storytelling is the one thing that we share. It's inside of our genes. It allows us to understand each other. There is no humanity without a feeling of caring for those we don't know. It's the most powerful way to experience anything. That experience will have people leaving feeling like they now understand something about somebody that lives halfway across the world. Church bells are ringing, the choir is singing, while a preacher groans, and a sister's moan in a blessed tone. Educate yourself about what happened in Hurricane Katrina and about all of the issues that Zaytun raises. Find a book about the American justice system and educate yourself about the issues. Uh, read a book about interfaith understanding or uh, listen to some of the music from New Orleans artists that you might have heard today. Uh, find a copy of Spike Lee's documentary about Hurricane Katrina when the levees broke and watch it and understand what happened. On Saturday, October 22nd at 2 p.m., some of the best story sharers from Newton South and Newton North will share their stories at Newtonville Books on Walnut Street in Newtonville. Organizations such as Mass Mouth also hold storytelling events and storytelling workshops that students can go to. I'm 
sure that there are other stories in this room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that we do a little workshop thing here. And what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to think of a time that you said something, wish you hadn't, or somebody said something that they wish they hadn't. Well, we've had the Community Service Club at South for many years, and um, we basically work on projects every year. For example, uh, we cook for a soup kitchen every month, and we fundraise to buy the food for the soup kitchen. Not only do we do that, we also hold an annual blood drive, and um, we have some fundraisers, depending on what the Community Service Club members want to fundraise for. So, for example, last year, um, with the tsunami in Japan. We had a big fundraiser for that and raised almost $900 for the American Red Cross. We've done other kinds of fundraising as well. So it's a very um, student-driven club and it depends on what kind of passion the kids have and what they want to do for the community. So sometimes the community will reach out to us and ask us to help them with something, maybe painting a building. We've done things like that or it might be us reaching out to the community. The most important thing, though, is that we focus on filling a need and not creating a need. And if somebody wanted to get involved with a community service club, what would they do? Well, they could come and see me, and we have a mail list. So maybe two to three times a month, kids will get emails from me announcing upcoming events and activities. And Newton South parents have also created an account at firstgiving.com where anybody from the community can go and donate money to aid the St. Bernard Project, which is an organization that raises money and aids uh, people on the ground in New Orleans. The St. Bernard Project has a wide variety of projects that directly aid people who have been victimized by Hurricane Katrina and by the Gulf oil spill a couple summers ago. <laughs> Hey. Yeah.